It's week 11 NFL review time, and this is a special week because it marks the return of puppy time. So don't you dare even think about Xing out of this video early because these beautiful puppers and doggos are waiting for you to see them. The video begins right after this short break. I want to take a moment to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's video, DraftKings. The weather might be cooling down, but the action on the field stays hot. And today I have partnered up with DraftKings, an official partner of the NFL, get you close to all the action. Right now, new customers, who bet just $5 will get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up using my promo code BARRY. The crown is yours. If you're already signed up for DraftKings, like me, you can get a no-sweat bet. Get a bonus bet back if your same-game parlay slash SGPX bet doesn't hit. Max reward limits apply. If you're a fan of multiple teams and you want to bet on them all, well, you can combine multiple bets together for a shot at an even bigger payout. If you live in a state where sports betting is not yet available, you don't have to worry. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports. So what are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. If you're a new customer, use my promo code Barry and bet just $5 and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code Barry only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Baltimore versus Cincinnati. This was the first time I can remember where going into the game, the Thursday night football matchup was actually pretty interesting. And although this game would produce season-changing events, it was not in the way many thought. The teams were locked in a 7-3 battle early on when Joe Burrow as Cockiner threw a touchdown to put Cincy up 10-7 late in the second, but it came with a heavy price as Burrow tore his wrist on the play and is now out for the season. Here we see him doing an incredible impersonation of a liberal trying to throw a football. Oh yeah, and by the way, one of the best tight ends in the league, Mark Andrews, also suffered a potentially season-ending injury for Baltimore as an aside. Nevertheless, the Ravens responded with back-to-back touchdowns Downs to go up 21 to 10 at halftime. At no point the rest of the game did Cincy feel like they had a real chance at winning, especially with Jake Browning, not to be racist, under center. Cincy kicked a field goal to make it 21 13 early in the second half, but that was as close as they would get. As Baltimore upped their lead to 34 13 with five minutes left, before Cincy scored a superficial and vain touchdown to make the final score of 34 to 20 a little less embarrassing. That's right, I went through the entire game without making an Odell poop reference. Am I a hero? Many people are saying yes. Jacksonville versus Tennessee. In what was ironically kind of a must-win game for both teams, the Jagovs emerged victorious. Part-time Naughty America actor Mike Vrabel's team failed to score on each of its first five drives, during which time Jacksonville took a commanding 27 to nothing lead before Billy Jean's Levis found shit smear DeAndre Hopkins on a bomb, no offense to Hiroshima, and Nagasaki. Finally get Tennessee on the board, entering the fourth down 27 to seven. Jacksonville responded in turn with a non-deceptively slash kind of deceptive touchdown run by Trevor Lawrence who had four total touchdowns on the day in one of the best games of his career before the Tits scored a worthless, disgusting, and disgraceful garbage time touchdown to reach the final score of 34-14. The Titans' season is lost, while the Jags remain a non-threatening 7-3. Dal ass versus Carolina. Stop me if you've heard this before, but the Cowgirls beat up on a horrible team to juice their record and stat. Well, guess what? That's what happened here. Dallas was up 17-3 at halftime before Gary Coleman threw a touchdown pass to Tommy Tremble, whose name all also describes Tom Brady whenever he sees Eli Manning to make it 17 to 10 entering the fourth. Dal Ass retook the lead with a long Tony Pollard, remember him? Touchdown run. But not even 10 seconds later, Peter Dinklage threw a horrible pick six to Deron Bland to make it 31 to 10 Dallas, which effectively ended the game. On Carolina's next drive, Emmanuel Lewis got strip sacked and Dallas added a field goal to win 33 to 10 to improve to seven and three, while Dallas dropped to one and nine, which is also R. Kelly's preferred age range. I know all the excuses are coming out for Booster C. Bryce, but I am asking what has he done in the NFL to deserve the benefit of the doubt for being so dog shit every single week? Andy Dalton still has the best quarterback performance by a Panthers player this season. Not good. Houston versus Arizona. This game had plenty of fireworks early on. Insert JPP joke here. Kyler Murray found Rondell Moore for the shortest 48-yard touchdown pass ever in terms of combined height, probably. But a little while later, fat face CJ Stroud found Dalton Schultz white for a tying touchdown. Arizona kicked a field goal before Devin Singletary ran in a touchdown to put Houston up 14 to 10. Interceptions were exchanged before Houston went up 21 to 10 at halftime on an insane 40-yard touchdown pass by Stroud to Tank Dell. The second half was a lot slower. No offense to Chris Broussard's late cousin. Kyler ran for a score to make it 21-16 Houston late in the third, but the teams then began a thrilling slam your dick in the door contest. Arizona turned it over on downs, then Stroud threw a bad interception in the red zone. Arizona turned it over again, then Stroud threw another terrible interception. He's had 
a couple of those the last couple weeks, just being honest. But fortunately for the Ohio State product, Cardinals suck and were unable to capitalize on it. As the game ended with Kyler turning it over on downs again, improving Houston to a seemingly impossible 6-4 and four record. New Jersey versus Washington. A battle between two shitty franchises. Jersey struck first following a Washington fumble to go up 7-0. Washington then cut it to 7-3 before a little lull in the action. Then Joe Pesci threw a touchdown to put the Giants up 14-3. Sammy Sachs showed some life, leading Washington to a touchdown with a miss extra point to make it 14-9 at halftime. Washington cut it to 14-12 with a field goal, then got a stop and were driving for a go-ahead score before fumbling, which New Jersey then turned into another touchdown pass to go up 21-12 early in the fourth. A Howell interception turned into a Jersey field goal to make it 24-12 with seven minutes left. Howell would then throw a touchdown to make it 24-19 with 2-16 left, and Washington got the ball back with a chance to win with 1 49 left, but fat Baker Mayfield threw a terrible pick six to seal the 31-19 loss for the Commandies. Miami versus Vegas. Tua Fumble Valoa made an appearance early, which helped set up a Vegas field goal, but Tua then responded by finding Nobel Peace Prize contestant Tyree Kill for a long touchdown. But wait a minute, Vegas was not flustered, as fat Derek Carr found Devontae Adams for a long touchdown of their own to make it 10-7 after one. Miami turned it over on downs to the goal line, but it had no effect, as a few drives later, Tua threw another touchdown to go up 14-10. Following another Dolphins fumble, Vegas kicked a field goal to make it 14-13 Miami at halftime. Tua turned the ball over through an interception to start the second half, but fortunately for him, Aiden O'Connell stinks. Miami missed a field goal, but O'Connell threw an interception, which ended with Miami taking a 20-13 lead into the fourth following two field goals. O'Connell would have four drives in the fourth quarter with a chance to tie, but the first ended with a punt, the second a turnover on downs, and the last two ending both in interceptions. The Gay Sharks won ugly, which is better than losing pretty but for a title contender, this was a far from inspiring performance. Cleveland versus Pittsburgh. Kenny Pickett versus Dorian Thompson Robinson? Excuse me while I grab my lube. This game was just as boring as you'd expect. It featured a combined 17 punts, while just 23 points and two touchdowns were all this piece of shit event could muster. Cleveland had a 10-0 halftime lead, but, of course, this is the Steelers we're talking about, and they somehow stumble ass backwards into competitive games every week despite their best efforts. Eventually, they tied the game at 10 early in the fourth following a field goal. They would also get two more drives with the score tied with a chance to win, but the usually unexplainably clutch Kenny Kitten Mittens was horrible, punting it away both times, including on a drive that started around midfield. Following some actual offense, Cleveland got into field goal range to win the game 13-10. It's blatantly obvious that Deshaun Watson's leadership has changed the Browns' culture as they now stand at 7-3. Is Miles Garrett a legitimate MVP candidate? Some are saying yes, not Mason Rudolph though. Green Bay versus the Chargers. Chargers. One of the more entertaining games of the weekend, the first quarter saw only a Chargers field goal before the Packers took a 7-3 lead on a 32-yard touchdown run by Jaden Reed. Hey, that rhymes! Little Barry. Kirby semi-loaded, then threw a 51-yard touchdown pass to Stone Smart with two Ts, which, ironically, is not how you spell smart, dummy. Green Bay would kick a field goal to tie the game at 10 at halftime. LA settled for a field goal to start the second half to go up 13-10 before Jordan loves to suck found Christian Watson to put Green Bay up 16-13 when the stupid worthless kicker missed the fucking extra point. Overrated slow poke, Austin Eckler fumbled, but LA got a stop, leading to a long touchdown drive by Herbert, capped off with a touchdown to Keenan Allen to put the Chargers up 20-16 with 5.24 left. To absolutely nobody's surprise, LA's defense immediately gave up a long-ass touchdown drive right back to put the Packers up 23-20 with 2.33 left. Punts were exchanged, giving Herbert the ball back down three with 1.27 left, but following a brutal drop by Quinton Johnston, LA turned the ball over on downs sending them to 4-6, and six, which is the most Charger thing imaginable. Detroit vs. Chicago Somebody forgot to tell Jared Goof that Christmas is still a month away because he was giving away the ball like it was a Christmas present. Luckily for him, the Bears were unable to extend their 7-0 lead into anything more. Goof finally got on track, leading a game-tying touchdown drive before taking a 14-10 lead at halftime following a touchdown pass to Amon Ross St. McCockiner. A Bears field goal made it 14-13 Detroit before a muffed kickoff return set up a Boston Fields touchdown pass to DJ Moore to put Chicago up 20-14. Goof threw his third interception of the day, shout out Tom Brady, 2020 after championship game, which set up another Chicago field goal. Chicago would then add another field goal to go up 26-14 with four minutes left, seemingly having the win locked up. No offense to Akon, 
but Goof would then turn into Goff, throwing a nice long touchdown to respectable gambler Jamison Williams to make it 26-21 with three minutes left. Chicago punted, which led to Goff leading a long game-winning touchdown drive and two-point conversion to put Detroit up 29-26 with 29 seconds left. Fields then got strip-sacked and shit the ball out of his ass by Aiden Hutchinson, alumni of Michigan, a famous institution of integrity, which was then kicked out of the end zone to reach the final score of 31-26. Fields wasn't actively bad, but it's obvious he's still not the guy. Detroit is now 8-2 for the first time since JFK's head exploded. LA Rams versus Seattle. This looked like it was going to be a Seattle blowout early on, as the Sea Chickens jumped out to a 13-0 lead. John Stafford then woke up and threw a touchdown to Puke Nukem just before halftime to make it 13-7. Seattle extended the lead to 16-7 in the third on a field goal, while the Rams' offense continued to struggle into the fourth quarter, where Stafford threw an early interception, but luckily for him, his defense held firm, giving him the chance to redeem himself. To be fair, it's not really hard for a defense to look good against Drew Locke, who had replaced Geno Smith. LA then cut it to 16-14 on a touchdown run, then Locke threw a terrible but manly arm punt, which led to LA kicking a go-ahead field goal with 131 left. Geno would return after injecting some medical marijuana into his ass, and led the Seahawks into position for a 55-yard game-winning field goal, but his stupid fucking worthless kicker missed it, sealing the 17-16 win for the Rams and dropping Seattle to 6-4. San Fran versus Tampa Bay. The first pick of the draft versus the last pick of the draft. Brock Purdy found Christian McCaffrey for a 1950s Middle America approved touchdown to put San Fran up 7-0 early. Baker Mayfield then fumbled the ball after it slipped out of his cheesecake-laden fingers, which led to San Fran kicking a field goal to go up 10-0. But unlike some of his female friends, Baker refused to go down. Leading a long touchdown drive, finished off with a touchdown pass to Mike Evans to make it 10-7. San Fran kicked another field goal to go up 13-7 at halftime. And then Purdy and his stupid fucking derp face then threw a long-ass touchdown to Brandon Ayuk to go up 20-7. Purdy found George Kittle for a touchdown to put San Fran up 27-7 entering the fourth quarter, but Tampa responded with a quick touchdown drive of their own to make it 27-14. Tampa would then have several chances to cut into the lead, but failed each time. The first ending with a turnover on downs, and the last ending in an end zone interception. Purdy finished the 27-14 win with a perfect passer rating, but we all know nobody's actually perfect, except for me, of course. Buffalo versus the Jets. The game began with a muffed kickoff return by the Jets, and a negative nine-yard field goal drive by Buffalo, so that lets you know what to expect. The Jets had three punts and an interception on their first four drives to fall behind 16 to nothing before punter Thomas Morstead unironically led them on an ultra-rare touchdown drive with some help from roughing the passer penalty to make it 16 to 6 Buffalo following a failed two-point conversion. The Bills would extend the lead to 22 to 6 following a Josh Allen touchdown pass to Ty Johnson, whose name literally translates to sexual bondage. Following yet another Jets punt, Allen threw a beautiful 81-yard touchdown pass to make it 29 to 6. The Jets once again punted, which led to Zach Wilson finally, mercifully, being benched for Tim Boyle by Coach Xerxes. Boyle threw one touchdown and 13 interceptions in college, by the way. The fourth quarter was a complete waste of time and saw the Bills add a field goal to reach the final score of 32-6. to Replacing Wilson for Boyle is like swapping out puke for diarrhea. Either way, the Jets remain the Jets. Denver versus Minnesota. I just broke into my neighbor's house, completely naked, to remind them that Josh Dobbs is a literal rocket scientist. They were so inspired by my information that they started crying. Wow. Denver struck first with a field goal off of a Dobbs fumble before Dobbs responded with a touchdown pass to Josh Oliver to make it 7-3. The teams then exchanged field goals before Denver kicked another field goal before halftime to make it 10-9 Minnesota. Charlie Villanueva then ran for a touchdown to make it 17-9, and the Vikings were in position to potentially put the game away when Alexander Madison fumbled. Shocker. The Broncos then kicked a field goal to start the fourth quarter, and following a Dobbs interception, Denver executed a legendary negative one-yard field goal drive, cut it to 17-15 with 11 minutes left. Dobbs would lead the Vikings on a long field goal drive to make it 20 to 15 with 317 left before drunk Tiger Woods led the Broncos down the field and did what he couldn't do in Super Bowl 49, which is throw a fucking clutch touchdown pass in the red zone to put the Broncos up by one with one minute left. With one last breath, Dobbs got Minnesota to around their own 40 before his arms were left wide open and he eventually turned the ball over on downs to reach the final score of 21 to 20. Dobbs failed to bring the Vikings higher. I refuse to congratulate Denver on being five and five because their state promotes marijuana use. Philadelphia versus Cannes ass. City. <laughs> Did you know that these teams met in the Super Bowl last year and that Travis and Jason Kelsey are brothers? <laughs> now you do. This much hyped game began like many expected, with the two teams exchanging touchdowns early on. Then Jalen Hurts and Patrick Mahomes got into a stupid interception contest, but it was KC that eventually took a 14 7 lead and then 17 7 lead into halftime. All the stupid poopy head Jalen Hurts haters and naysayers were out and about in full force because Hurts was having a terrible
terrible game, but Philly would eventually trim the lead to 17-14 entering the fourth. Forget the tush push, we're calling it the ass blast now. KC looked in prime position to go up by 10, but then Travis Kelsey fumbled the ball away near the end zone. Maybe he should focus less on having sweaty, stinky, smelly, sinful premarital sex in Argentina with Taylor Swift and more on football. Always remember, playing over laying. Anyway, the teams exchanged punts when Jalen Hurts, heroically fighting through a potentially fatal knee injury, as well as dealing with ungodly amounts of cyberbullying, threw a dime deep to Devonta Smith, which set up Hurts' second ass blast touchdown of the day to give Philly a 21-17 lead with 6-20 left. The teams exchanged punts again, which gave Mahomes one last chance to drive 91 yards with 2.49 left to win the game, but Marquez Valdez Scantling dropped what would have been a huge touchdown. Honestly, if I was him, I would have pretended like I was dead after dropping this so people wouldn't criticize me as much. And then on 4th and 25, Justin Watson dropped another great throw by Mahomes to seal the win for the Eagles. It's obvious Mahomes' receiver's hands don't work because he refuses to take a pay cut. Eagles 9-1 once again, the haters can suck my dick from the back. Oh, what's that? You're thinking about Xing out of this video because the highlights are over? If you're a true fan, you'll stay and watch these pictures of these adorable puppies to the very end. And if you don't, I will find you and vomit all over you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's puppy time. Thank you.